Hey, what's going on? My name's Robert, and you are watching Southpaw Auto Works. This is the Turbo 400. In this video, we're installing the intermediate clutch, the front band, and the direct clutch drum. Without further ado, let's get this show on the road. Okay, next step, intermediate clutches. These are the largest clutches in the transmission. Most of these are just gonna take three, three steels, three frictions, and the infamous wave plate. So you're looking for the one that's wavy as you look at it crossways, okay? That one's gonna go down in first against your piston, and then we'll alternate frictions in between, just like the other clutch packs I showed you, okay? Those steels are gonna lug to the case itself. Okay, and then we just alternate steels and frictions. Like I said, three is usually the standard count on these. Ending with the friction on top, those to drop all the way in. And then last, our pressure plate, which is directional. We've got one smooth side, right? one step side. Smooth side goes down. And then notice we do have a very large lug here to line up with the case where the steels would go in in any position. This guy has to be specific to make with the opening that's in the case right there. Only gonna go in one direction, one position. And a snap ring to hold it in place. This is a flat snap ring, it's not directional. Now we can do a real basic clearance check by lifting up on the clutches here. Okay. It's got a good amount of clearance there, which is just fine for this clutch pack. Okay. We've got the intermediate clutches in the case. What we want to do next is what's called an air check. All right. We'll be using air to apply the clutch rather than fluid listening for major amount of leaks in there. We do not want to use full air pressure. Generally speaking, they would want it regulated down to about 30 PSI, okay? So we're just gonna use a light amount on the trigger itself, okay? And we're gonna look for those clutches to apply, come up that piston to squeeze those together against the uh, pressure plate, make sure that they appear to be working pretty good. And we're gonna go right down through the hole which is in that center support bolt. Okay, that's gonna be the feed hole for those intermediate clutches. And what we're gonna do is listen for kind of a nice thunk, if you will, technical term, <laughs> when they apply. Okay, if you can hear that. Very light amount of air pressure. Using the rubber tip in there to kind of seal it off. We get a good fast apply. And we also get what we call hang time. The clutches apply and they stay applied for a short period of time before they bleed off again. Remember, we're using air, not fluid, so it's not gonna be a perfect apply, okay? Air's a lot thinner, it's gonna leak out, you're gonna hear some hissing. We wanna make sure we don't have a major leak, if you will, okay? If we're in doubt, we can always add a little fluid in that hole, put air on top of it, see if that changes, okay? But that's all we've done is applied that air. What we'll do is a second air check once we get our direct clutch pack put down in the case, and we'll also check that one. If this type of content is adding value, please let us know by hitting that like button. It does help the channel, and we do greatly appreciate your feedback. Okay, intermediate clutches are in. Next is our little band here. It's called a coast band or brake engine braking band two different ends on it, this being the one that lugs to the case or anchors it, this being the apply side for the servo. We'll drop that in the case, anchor it in place. Like Andy said, this is the anchor side of the band. This attaches to the case anchor that's located right here. Okay. Okay, direct drum goes in next with the roller clutch facing down. 
Okay, that becomes part of our job on this is we've got to get this outer race to spline to the intermediate clutches. We've got to get past the band and we've got to get the sun gear shaft to spline to the drum. No real good way to grab this with your fingers. So what we've got is a tool that we've made. We take the snap ring and the pressure plate out. We've taken an old pressure plate that we had, welded the handle to it. Makes for a little easier installation. We'll just put that in the drum in place of the original pressure plate. Put our snap ring in. I don't necessarily put the snap ring all the way in there, but uh, alternative to installing the direct drum during your build, if you don't have the tool to make this easy with the little handle on it like we showed you, very simply, take your clutches out of the clutch pack, okay? And then what I can do, you can do here is just fold up a rag or something, put it around the retainer itself because the retainer is a little sharp, a little tough on the fingers. Grab this drum, lift it that way, drop it down into the case, get it splined into your intermediate clutches. That way you don't have to look for the tool or, or try and make a tool for it. Put that in there. Put our snap ring in. Gives us a nice handle. Okay, our band immediately has dropped down a little ways and gotten caught underneath the drum. So I'm going to go into the apply side of the band and try and pull it away from the drum itself. All right? It's already stuck in there. What I was trying to do here is grab this with the screwdriver and pull back on the band to expand it a little bit. Usually what I do on this band is I give it a little stretch to help me because it wants to kind of shrink down around that drum. Makes it tough to get that drum in past there. So once again, anchor it to the case. Hopefully we've got enough clearance in there now. Try this again. Yep. Move the band out of the way. There, we might have got past it that time. Now we just got to work it past those clutches and get those to spline into place. Do a drop test. If it sounds that solid, we should be past the clutches. If it were up against one of the friction plates, we wouldn't get that solid thunk. Quick way to double check ourselves. Make sure that that drum is all the way in, spline to all the clutches. We'll apply the intermediate clutches, which is that middle bolt, middle hole. Okay. If that drum jumps up at us, it's not in all the way. Okay, clutches are fully applied, drum doesn't move, we're good. Need parts and tools for your Turbo 400? Check out the resources section in the video description down below. Okay, so we know the drum's in all the way, snap ring out, tool, replace it with our original pressure plate. Put the snap ring back in. Make sure we're all the way in the groove. And then if we like, we can re-air check that drum now that it's in the case. Once again, not gonna air check real good because we're trying to get down through the passage in the case, but we can get an idea that everything is intact and that we did not break any of the ceiling rings that we had to uh, fit in there. Okay, ready to drop our forward drum in. I'm going to use a pair of pliers just to kind of help us with that. Grab a hold of it and get it splined in place. All right. Got to work it. Make sure we drop all the way in place. Once again, a little drop test. Nice solid. Sounds like we're not on any of the frictions there.
this show is a ton of hours to produce and we could use your support. You can learn more by checking out the video description down below. So we just went through the intermediate clutch forward band or front band, uh, direct clutch drum and forward clutch drum. All that stuff has been installed down into the transmission case. Naturally, that leaves the pump to be installed next. But before we install it, we got to put it together. And that's what we're going to cover in the next video. If you haven't done so already, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell too, so you don't miss out on any upcoming videos. Once again, my name's Robert, and I will see you next time.